All right, the chapter started with talking about the difference between prokaryotes, the bacteria, and eukaryotes, a cell with a nucleus. And, one of and when you look at the two cells, you'll find that the prokaryotes do have DNA, but they're circular DNA. It's relatively simple. They have small plasmids, uh, extra little pieces of DNA. You kind of think of them as small chromosomes, but they're very simple. Where a eukaryote will have something called chromosomes. And these chromosomes can, be, can vary in number depending on the species. But in humans, we're talking about 23 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And when you're talking about 23 pairs of chromosomes, of course, you're talking about 46 total, all right? 46 total chromosomes. Now, remember, when we say 23 pairs or 46, we're saying there's, this is chromosome 1, this is chromosome 2, well, let me redraw that. It's awful. Uh, so you have chromosome 1, and you have chromosome, another chromosome 1. should be identical, but isn't obviously in the drawing. And then you'll have chromosome 2, and you'll have another chromosome 2. Now, when this cell goes through replication, what you get is you get these structures that are connected through a centromere that look like this. This is still chromosome 1, and each of these is a chromatid. And there's going to be two of these, aren't there? Because there were initially two, and they were both chromosome 1, as you see over here in this area. So each one of these two duplicated in the S phase of the cell cycle. And you end up with two copies here, one here, one here. We'll just color, let's color in one of them with brown. And let's, and let's have, so there's, this started with a brown, and there's two browns now. And they're both identical in their combination of DNA. And then the green chromosome over here, there's two copies, and both of these have exactly the same DNA. Now, when this, this is necessary, this doubling is necessary. If you're going to get two exact copies on each side of, and each of the daughter cells, because you want to make sure that you get one of these copies, one of these number ones in the cell. This number one, the brown one, came from dad, and the green one came from mom. And so you want to make sure that when you're looking at these cells, the new two new cells, that you just like you had one from dad and one from mom, in your both new cells, you're going to get one from dad and one from mom. How do you do that? Well, remember that in metaphase, these all line up in a, li in a straight line. And then using the kinetic cores, they get separated. One of the number ones goes this way, and one of the number ones goes that way. And, of course, you'll get one dad number one coming over here into the new cell. And you get one of dad, mom's number ones going over here to the new cell. That's exactly the, uh, on the opposite side of the division. But that's going to happen 23 times, all right? 23 times. Not 20, excuse me, not 23 times. 46 46 times, 23 pairs times 2, so 46 times that. So there's going to be 46 of these doubles lined up, and then they're all going to divide, and then you'll end up with 46 in each new cell. And that's what you want. You want 46. You want both mom and, uh, mom and dad's copies in each cell. That's key. Now, you can see that that's very complicated. You can just imagine, and you know if you've been studying, if you've read your books the way you should have, your chapters, you should have, you, I assigned it on Monday, uh, but of course you had over the Christmas break, or the holiday break, to, to look at them, uh, and I told you you should get ahead, so you see that there's many steps, there's four steps, or five steps, depending on how you look at it, for mitosis, and then 
Mitosis is the dividing of this DNA. So it's, it's, the reason we have to look at it clearly and carefully is because it's very, it has to be, it, it's inherently complicated to try to make sure that you get an exa the exact chromosome that needs to get into the daughter cell without putting too many copies in that daughter cell. So if you can imagine, there's two of these, right? There's this number one here, and there's number one over here, one from dad and one from mom. It would not be good if you get both of these going to one cell and none of dad's going in a new cell and one of these going into this cell. So now this one, this cell on this side has three and this cell on this side only has one. That would not be any good at all. You need one of each of these to go into each of the, of the new daughter cells. This is, seems very complicated, or at least uh, seems to me to be a little more uh, difficult than, uh, than, than thinking about something like this, where you're just looking at a single chromosome that needs to be replicated, maybe some plasmids, and then that divides into two. So when I when we look at this going into two, that doesn't seem to me to be as complicated. And I hope it, you all you agree that it's not as complicated as this this comp this cell with its twenty three with its uh, twenty three pairs or forty six chromosomes all replicating all making sure that dad's comes into this side and mom comes into that side. You have to make sure that each of the two daughter cells then gets 46 here and 46 here, one from dad, one from mom, right? And over here, one from dad and one from mom for each of the 23 pairs. So that's really the big difference between bacterial binary fission and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes going through this uh, dupli replication. So we look more deeply at eukaryotes. We worry more deeply because we are eukaryotes. And when we think about binary fission, we think really about these simple prokaryotes doing a much simpler job at replicating their, um, their genetic material and their cytoplasm and their cells. I want to say that even though it's simple, they're still complicated as compared to folding paper or a simple acid-base reaction. There's still a lot of relatively complicated bi biology or biochemistry going on over here. But in the case of comparing prokaryote to eukaryote, there doesn't seem to be much of a comparison. You have to imagine that realistically, when you're talking about a eukaryote, it's something that's much more complicated than a bacteria as far as replicating its DNA. Okay, so in the... In the cell cycle, again, we're talking about eukaryotic cell cycle, right? So we're looking at the beginning of the cell cycle being the first gap phase. This is when, if you want to call it beginning, let's say, the here. And it starts to grow. It starts to duplicate all its organelles and, and make its proteins that it needs to make. If that cell, let's say, is a neuron in the middle of your brain after your brain uh, has, has finished uh, duplicating as many times as this, the neurons have duplicated as many times as they're going as they're going to, then that cell is probably going to go into resting phase and just do its job. It's just going to do its its uh, you know its its firing of its of its signals, its recouping of its of its proteins that it needs to do, and just continuously do its job until it it, it dies. In some cases, this cell will start to re-enter the 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 uh, the cell cycle in order to do repairs and etc. That does not happen very much in cell types like neurons uh, as, as far in humans. Um, we know that in other organisms they're able to do that. We're, in humans we're not as as nimbly uh, able to re- our neurons are not easy, easily uh, do not easily re-enter uh, the cell cycle. In organisms like starfish and some uh, reptiles, you're, they're able to just regenerate very quickly, even neurons. Um, but there are cells like epithelial cells, the skin cells, the lining of your mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines. Uh, they, that, those, those cells replicate all the time. They're continuously going through the cell cycle 
and uh, rarely go into resting phase. Uh, they have a short lifespan and they need to replace. Because remember, the whole point of the cell cycle is to duplicate the cell. And why would you have to duplicate the cell? Well, you'd have to, you'd have to duplicate the cell if you're dealing with, um, you know, if you're dealing with, with, um, you know, replacing uh, tissue. If you're dealing with growing, uh, getting bigger. Um, you know, if you started, all of us started with one cell. You need to make, you need to grow. You need to make your arms, your legs, you have to start growing height. Even after you've formed a little person, that little person gets bigger. That happens by multiplying the cells. The cells don't grow bigger. The cells multiply. You get more cells. So that's all up to this cell cycle. Uh, the cell cycle then uh, does not... Uh, the cell cycle does not... is not just mitosis. Mitosis is it just uh, where we go from prophase to telophase. That's mitosis. Uh, but there's the entire process of growing, duplicating the material, synthesizing the DNA, and then uh, making sure we double up on proteins or what have you, and whatever else needs to get, um, whatever else needs to get duplicated to, in order to be ready, to get ready for mitosis, that, that whole idea of making sure that you get exactly all the code in each one of the cells. So there's three checkpoints in this in this cell cycle when we're going from first gap to synthesis to second gap to mitosis. And don't forget our little cytokinesis that's over here at the in between mitosis which is over here and uh, the first gap. This is the M phase. M phase goes all the way across here including cytokinesis. But mitosis is Prophase, metaphase, we can add a prometaphase, okay, so there's prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, that's three so far, anaphase and telophase, right, so that's five steps, four if you don't include a prometaphase. Uh, so these are the steps of mitosis, the cytokinesis is the last step of the M phase, and that's the separation of the cells. So the key is that mitosis is a separation of the DNA that all the chromosomes going exactly where they have to go in order to make sure that each of the daughter, the new daughter cells, we call the two new cells daughter cells, that each of these two uh, daughter cells are, have all the, um, all the, the material and, and the information they need to continue doing what they would normally do. So here's one cell and it needs to go to two daughter cells. So you need, mitosis is just the duplication of that DNA, or just not duplication, excuse me, but the separation. It's about separating that DNA. Everything else has its, has its place. Cytokinesis is about separating the actual cells themselves, finalizing that tissue, and we'll look at how that happens. Uh, the, uh, rather, not tissue, but fi finalizing the membrane separation. But mitosis is about separating that DNA, carefully making sure that chromosome 1 from dad's over here, chromosome mom, chromosome 1 from mom's is over here, chromosome 1 from dad's uh, uh, mom is over here, uh, and, um, and chromosome 1 from dad is over here as well. So you have one copy of each, one from mom, one from dad, and this new one. We don't want two from mom's going over here and two from dad's going over here. Now, you might ask, what does it matter? They're both chromosome 1, they have the same genes. But see, that's the point. When you're, each of the chromosomes has different information, even though it still codes for eye color, your dad's eye color might be green and your mom's brown. So, one, so each one is coding for a different, not pigment, but you know, a variation of the pigment that makes the, the, the color different. And it's not just color, it's heart size and and growth rate and all kinds of other things. So each one of these genes has a different what we call allele or different version of the gene. It's for eye color, that gene number 100 is for eye color, but there's different versions of the eye color. That gene number one is for height, but there's different versions of height. So one can be, version A can be long, very tall, and version two can be short, but they're both for height. So each of these genes, and again, there's thousands of them on each of the, uh, 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 in, your, in your genome, tens of thousands of them. 
and you're looking at each chromosome containing a specific gene and the, your mom's has a specific combination of what we say again, alleles or versions of those genes. And dad's has another set, specific set of or versions of those uh, of his genes. And you want in, in order to make an exact copy, because that's what mitosis is, it's concerned with making an exact copy. You don't want a trillion of your cells doing uh, having a trillion different versions of your genome, right? Of your your book of life. You want everybody to be on the same page. So you have a trillion cells, you want to make sure that all trillion of those cells are all working together. They're all doing the same thing. So you want you want fidelity, high fidelity. So when you're looking at this cell here, this cell it, when it's it turns into these two cells, these two cells will be identical to each other if you're doing mitosis and it's done correctly. There are checkpoints. The first checkpoint is in the first gap, and it occurs towards the end of that first gap, and it checks whether the cell is big enough or not. You need to know the, what these checkpoints are. Now, I'm telling you, you need to know what the gap is, what their order is, what the mitotic phases and their order are, and what is cytokinesis. You need to know G0 is a resting phase, and you need to know what the three steps, what are the three checkpoints We've covered this in the, in the lecture. In your, it's in your notes in the PowerPoint. It's in the reading. And it's in, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do the lab on Monday. So when we're looking at the, the cell growth checkpoints, you're looking to see if not the cell goes through the, uh, you know, again, if nothing goes, if, no, if there's a problem with this, then the cell goes through a resting period G0 and then re-enters when necessary. There are other triggers that, you know, that, that, can, that control whether it goes on and does the rest of, 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 uh, of the cell cycle that can also put it into G0. So, you know, normally if the, if the cell just isn't big enough yet, it goes into resting, it gets a little bigger and comes back in. That could happen in an epithelial cell or a liver cell, and that would just keep going. But in a neuron, it stays in G0 its, own, its entire, through your entire lifespan. So now let's take a look at our second DNA synthesis checkpoint. And uh, our second checkpoint is DNA synthesis. Now here it's making sure that the DNA is being replicated correctly. It's making sure that there's very few mutations. And actually it's interesting that there are very few mutations when you consider how, many, how big our genome is in our genome. So we, we don't see a lot of people with like eight arms and three heads and wings and et cetera. Although some of us are disappointed in that. There's not that much variation among humans. There is, of course, variation. There are mutations. Things happen. Uh, and mutations are neither good nor bad. They're just changes. In some cases, mutations lead to good things, and sometimes they, they end up, and good and bad just means, is it good for that creature or is it bad for that creature? So mutation, when you're going through synthesis, really what you're looking for is trying to make an exact copy of that genome, of the DNA that's in that nucleus. So if, everything, if all that DNA is correct, it's just going to keep going. And if not, then everything stops. All right? And, of course, at this point, if there's something wrong with the genome, if there's something wrong with this replication, the cell commits uh, cellular suicide. It does, it, it goes through, it, it just shuts down and it dissolves. Now, when we go, the last checkpoint in the cell cycle is this mitosis checkpoint in metaphase. In metaphase, your checkpoint, that checkpoint checks to see if all the chromosomes are attached along the, the metaphase plate. And it does those, those, tu those tubulin molecules, those uh, wires, if you will, or cables, are attached to the centrosome and they're tight. If they are, we're ready to go. And then we start and we keep going. And we just divide, the cell divides and mitosis continues, or the cell cycle continues. If not, if not, the cell then again uh, dies, and uh, some other cell that's its neighbor will continue to the process of going around doing this right. So dividing that my, that DNA exactly right, as I've been describing to you, is what this third checkpoint is all about. The first one is just checking to see how big it is, is it have all the resources it needs to do that division. It wouldn't do any good if this cell has all the DNA correct, but has no Golgi body, 
or no endoplasmic reticulum because this one got it all. So you have to divide it evenly or if neither one of these cells have enough Golgi body to do its job. They have to make sure, this, this first gap has to make sure that you get all the material you need to be able to divide into two. This synthesis is checking to make sure that all, the, all 23 chromosomes, all 23 pairs of chromosomes have divided, have, have duplicated correctly. When we look at that, at that copy, when it looks at that copy that's connected by that centrosome, do these two match? Do these two match? If there's an A here, is there an A here? If there's a T here, is there a T here? All the way down those billion nucleotides on each of the 23 pairs of chromosomes, all 46, they have two copies on each. We call them chromatids when they're connected, and when they separate, they're called chromosomes. But each of these being connected, I have to check and make sure that all those copies are correct. And once that's done, if everything's fine, then it moves on to the second gap where it finishes up its growth phase and it starts into mitosis. All right, so that's key that you know these three checkpoints and what they do at each one because there will be questions on the quiz on this material. So, okay, in eukaryotic division, again, when we've gone through the cell cycle, the C0, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, when we go through the cell cycle and you've gone through the G0, G1, uh, the S phase and the uh, G2 phase, and you've looked at uh, all those things and you know what's going on where in G0 you're resting in G1, you're growing in S phase, you're duplicating the DNA, making those second copies. And in, um, in uh, G2, what you're doing is you're you can make finishing up all the, all, the rep, all the doubling of the materials that you need and preparing for the uh, mitosis to do. Then we enter mitosis. And here we have prophase. And in prophase, you're looking at the DNA as being very much uh, uh, normally in, in interphase, which is everywhere but mitosis. So everywhere from G1 all the way through G2, the DNA is in a chromatin or granular phase, uh, look to it. It's, you can't really see much in, as far as uh, details because it's just a kind of a, a little stringy mess, uh, if you will. It's not, it's organized, but it, it's just, it's unraveled. It's not all t uh, tied up around histones. Well, in prophase, they start to, it starts to, to condense. It starts to wrap around the histones and make these, these, uh, these things we call chromosomes. And this is very important because if you're going to get exactly, you know, at this point here, you've already duplicated it. So again, you have, you know, 92 copies of DNA in various, in various arrangements. Now we say 46, but remember at this point here, the 46 are going to have, are, uh, each, of the, each of the 23 pairs are going to have copies attached to them. And you have all this DNA, you have to, if you're going to move them equally into two cells, if you're going to move, go from this one cell and equally distribute that DNA into two new cells, you have to do it very carefully. So the best way, you know, if you can think about it this way, if you have, you know, 10 billion pieces of paper in an office building and you need to move them to another office building, you need to copy them and make sure that each, each billion, each 10 billion sheets of paper get distributed into two different offices. Well, just, you know, just randomly throwing them about wouldn't be very useful at all. So, you know, the, probably the best way of doing it is to, is to copy all the papers there in the office and then, do, and then package them into boxes that are clearly labeled and then, dish, then ship the boxes, to, uh, you know, box one that contains one copy, two box ones, one box one goes into one office and one box one goes into a second office. And that would be a really good way of dividing these really, uh, you know... Uh, complicated material you would find in one office and distribute it between two separate offices. Well, DNA is going to do the same thing. And the cells are going to do the same thing. You have all this complicated stuff. The best way it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to package it up. And we call those packages chromosomes. And, they're, and the chromosomes take a form of, in this case, because they're doubled up, they take a form of this, these two kind of 
uh, uh, molecules, double molecules, right? So the each each DNA strand is actually two strands, and they're connected into a double helix. And here's another. We'll talk about that in the next unit. And here's another copy. They're both equal. They're both copied. One. This is chromosome one. This is chromosome one from dad. They're both from dad. They're both e equal information. The information is exactly the information you got from dad. Uh, after, well, this is a little complicated. We'll talk about that in meiosis. And actually, I shouldn't have drawn it here because here it is. Here's a chromatid. We call it a chromatid when they're connected by this, by the centromere. Here's the word centromere. Um, these are exact copies of DNA, all wound up and packaged. Like I said, putting the office papers into boxes. These are the boxes for the DNA. And, called, you know, we call them chromos chromatids when they're connected. When they separate, we'll call them chromosomes. And you'll see here the microtubules line up, and there's tension. And the, as the, as the uh, centrioles start to, start to separate or pull on these microtubules, spindle fibers, these two chromatids separate. Chromosome 1 from dad goes into the cell over here, and chromosome 1 from mom goes into the cell over here. Okay, so... We, we just, I just need you to understand that when we're talking about uh, this, it's, it's just, and what I find when kids, when kids do this is when you, when you try to think about this, yeah, there's several little missteps that you can make. And one of them is not remembering that this, this, this one chromosome is made up of two chromatids, each one containing the same information. Where one came, they both came from dad, and this information from dad is going to go into one cell, and this information from dad goes into this cell, and it has to do that for all 23 pairs, not just from the chromosome from dad, but the one from mom, chromosome one from mom, and then do that 23 times. It has to do that uh, across so that you can get that information to each of the new cells. So in the in pro phase, that stuff's getting start to get packed into these things that we call chromosomes. It'll, it'll look like this. They start to look like this. In pro-metaphase, you see the discrete chromosomes. Now, I want to remind you that they were, we're looking at a pretty low, I mean, relatively low, it's not an electron micrograph, and it's a cut. So you're seeing one piece, one slice of the cell, so you're not going to see 23 pairs. But you do see the chromosomes all packed up versus being, uh, versus starting to get packed up over here. And you see discrete chromosomes, each of them consists of two identical sister chromatids, just like you see here. This is a drawing, computer-generated drawing. This is what you'll see in the lab when you look at the onion root tip cell. And they're identical, obviously. They're sister chromatids. They both came from mother or father. And later than pro-metaphase, uh, uh, the nuclear envelope will, will start to disappear, right? So at the end of pro-metaphase, you're not going to see this, this nuclear envelope anymore. Now, so that's what's happening. So in between this condensing and this lining up, there's this kind of like a fuzzy area around the nucleus. You see the chromosomes are, are clearly, if you see chromosomes clearly, they're not lined up. They're not lined up. They're not moving to separate sides. We would call that pro-metaphase or before metaphase. Now in some diagrams, in some books, depending on how, how, how detailed you want to look at the process, you might just call the whole thing metaphase. If you know, This is a metaphase, this is a metaphase. But to be accurate, this would be pro-metaphase. And this is metaphase, and metaphase is easy, probably the easiest one. And metaphase and anaphase are really easy to tell. Metaphase is when they all line up. And when they're lined up, they're getting ready to separate. Because just like this, just like you see here, one of the chromosomes is going to come over here, to this area, and one of the chromosomes is going to come over here. Now you might ask, where's the other half? I don't see it. Well, you don't see all that because, again, you have to remember these are slices. These are very thin slices, and you can only focus on one, one division. We're talking about th a three-dimensional object that we're looking at two dimensions. So it's out of focus, in other words. All right, here you have anaphase. Now, an anaphase... Again, it's very clear that all the chromosomes are over here on this side. You can tell that if you were going to, uh, if, if, you could, if you had no other picture on the screen, you could probably imagine that this would become one cell and this would become another cell. And you'd have an exact copy. So you'd have 23. If this was a human cell, you'd have 23 over here and 23 over here. Pairs. You'd have 23 pairs over there and 23 pairs over here. 
That is not the case because this is obviously a plant cell. I hope it's obvious to you that this is a plant cell because you see that there's these rigid, thick, squared off walls that we call cell walls, okay? Uh, but here you see that the DNA is moving to one side and DNA to the other side. And these little strings that attach to the chromosomes, they're these microtubule spindle fibers that pull them apart, pull them apart, pull them apart. And of course, in telophase, they're clearly two, uh, two nuclei. You see that there's this beginning of a separation. The nucleus starts to reform. The chromosomes start to unravel. Uh, and you start to become, they start to become two separate cells now. They're making sure everything's evenly divided between the two cells. Now, the last step, which is of the M phase, which you don't see here because it's not part of mitosis. This is only mitosis. Mitosis is prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The last step of the M phase is this division, the final division that you see the beginnings of here. You see them in an in a animal cell, you'd have a microfilament ring that squeezes it off and finally divides into two cells. And the plant cell, you see the plate that divides the cell and finally turns into a cell wall. And this separates the two, the two plant cells. So that's pretty much it for mitosis. Um, there are a lot of questions. You need to focus on the, on the reading and the questions in the chapter. Uh, your, your quiz is going to be uh, about 46 questions long. It's going to be multiple choice, some fill-in, true-false. And there'll be about four, S, four short answers. Um, it's as long as a test, but it won't be as worth as much. Uh, so you can, uh, and of course, remember, if you're doing a science fair project, you can, if you mess this up, you can always excuse this one. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as a guide. I wouldn't blow this off. This is a very important topic. And uh, so this is your first chance to do well. In, this, in the third quarter on this quiz. The quiz is going to cover all this material and everything else in Chapter 5. Uh, the, it's made by the manufacturers, not made by me. I've covered all the highlights that, uh, that I believe are on the... Uh, I've looked at the, at the quiz and I've covered just about everything that I can think of. What you need to be thinking about is uh, what kinds of questions I might ask or the book might ask. You might ask yourself, what would happen if something went wrong in metaphase? And only one cell, uh, one of the new cells got one less chromosome and one little, one too few chromosomes. We talked about that in class. You get some type of disease in a human where things like Down syndrome is trisomy 21 or three copies of chromosome number 21. We call that disploidy or uh, diploidy. Uh, triploidy, triploidy, as I said, sorry. So, you know, the, the diseases are caused by that. Issues are caused by that. You're making too many proteins or too few proteins of that particular set. So you're going to have issues in the biochemistry that's going on in that particular cell. So that's what would happen in something like prof metaphase. What would ha where is the control point in, in, in the cell cycle? Where are the three control points? Well, there's one control point here in metaphase where the DNA is getting... You're gonna making sure that these the tension on these rods and these strings on these tubules are very are tight enough to be able to separate them evenly and carefully. And sometimes it doesn't happen and sometimes it doesn't work and the cell dies. And the and in that cell would be, you know, the and and the new cell, another its neighbor cell would continue on with its cell cycle and 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 complete it uh, where it would be able to. Where does cancer come into this? How does cancer we have to remember cancer is also going to be tested. You have to think about that. Well, just remember that cancer is this out-of-control cell cycle where the control points, the three control points, are no longer working. So there's nothing stopping it from, you know, the, 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 the first checkpoint, remember, is just checking to see if, the, uh, if, the, if it's big enough to divide. So it could be big enough, but it may not have the right material, but it could be, is it big enough? Sure, it could be big enough. The second the second checkpoint is just looking to see if the DNA is correctly, is, is correctly uh, uh, replicated. That again can be uh, if there's an issue that would stop, but if it's, if it's clearly replicated, that's not a problem. The third checkpoint is here in, my, in metaphase. And the question is, is the, are, are these tight enough? Will that allow, will then that 
is it dividing correctly, then at that point, again, at that checkpoint, you could stop or keep going or die. If it stops, it dies. So the question then becomes, you know, what is cancer? Cancer is something that goes wrong at those three checkpoints. At one or more of those checkpoints where something's not stopping it from dividing. There's no stop to the, my, to the cell cycle. It goes through mitosis. It goes through then the rest of the cell cycle, cytokinesis. It makes two. One goes to two. And then those two go to two. Then those two go to two. And you end up with this uncontrolled growth. As a, as a kind of a of a side, remember that, it, and one of our classmates uh, had kind of, and we all have them because you have to remember that things like warts and moles are also some of the, uh, are examples of these kind of out of control division of tissue. That 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 the idea that this out of control division or cancer can be benign, so it's not can not cancer us. So it's not doing the division completely without any kind of control. It's for some reason it stops. Uh, then you get a mole or wart or some growth. And these benign, what we call tumors, can be removed from your, from, uh, from your tissue type without too much trouble. It's not a big issue. So, but when, the, when, that, when that multiplication of cells continues and spreads in uh, one of these cells, then that's out of control, that's not, doesn't have a stop, that keeps dividing, that keeps going through mitosis, and keeps going through the cell cycle, goes through G1, then G, then, uh, then uh, S phase, then G2, then mitosis again, it keeps going round and round and round and round, and dividing one to two to one to, uh, one to two to one to two to two to two, et cetera, all the way down to a billion or a trillion. Then these these cells can spread. They can one little cell can break off and go into the bloodstream and end up in your head. Now you have a brain growth. You one in your liver and your kidneys. And once it starts to what we call metathesize, now it's now it's now it's a problem. And that's where we start when you have a cancer, a cancerous tissue. When you have cancerous tissue, metathesizing tissue, tissue that's spreading and growing. That's when you have to go through something like chemotherapy or radiation therapy. So there's various things you check for, and we've talked about those things to make sure that you're not having any of this going on in your body. You go, that's why you go to a doctor, you get your regular checkups. Uh, but the bottom line is there are some things that we can, we can uh, uh, do to try to reduce our chances, but cancer is a matter of luck. As it turns out, some re new research uh, suggests that a lot of cancers, not all of them, but a lot of cancers are just a matter of luck on whether you whether this whole complicated process is happening, at, you know, as we said, a million times a second in your body at different places with different cells, uh, over your trillion cells in your body. It's a matter of luck whether one of these ends up uh, getting one of these mistakes that doesn't allow the checkpoint to work that lets my t that cell cycle continue over and over very rapidly. And some of these cancers grow fast, and some grow slow, and some have, some are uh, metathesized easily, while others just turn into into you know benign tumors. And so it's all it really is a matter of luck, good luck and bad luck, as far as who gets uh, you know what happens when it comes to something like this. Some of us will go through our whole lives and never experience it. Some of us will have to you know go through and and, and experience it and hopefully survive it. Uh, and so, you know, again, cancer is just about this process of the cell cycle, the cell division being out of control. Of course, mitosis continuously going on. All right. Well, I hope this explains everything. I hope it's clear. Uh, any questions, we'll cover on, on Monday. We will definitely uh, do the lab on Monday. Uh, we're going to have Tuesday. We are doing conditions for learning, and we're also... Uh, you know, debriefing from the lab, and we will have the quiz uh, on on Monday as well. There are the not everybody is going to be doing the lab at the same time. There's plenty of time to do both, so we'll do the lab and the quiz on Monday. Be ready for the quiz, chapter five. Do your workbook questions, section five one five two. That's what we're doing now. Five three five three is going to start Wednesday, and we'll just be a couple days behind. The snow day and and. And uh, my slight cold I got on Friday just it, it just uh, set us back. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't do Saturday school. Don't forget, 
your science fair projects would really help you uh, get ready for, uh, you know, with those free three free quizzes and, and get ready for the uh, uh, your your park exam that you're going to hit on in uh, March for science and in February for English. Read that uh, newsletter I put out for you if you need any help with that. All right. Have a good one.